Ours is a profoundly generous, loving, and gracious God. God is the source of all joy, beauty, peace, and love. God is everything. In the name of that God, amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> the Giving Tree by Shel Silverstein. Once there was a tree, and she loved a little boy. And every day the boy would come, and he would gather her leaves and make them into crowns and play king of the forest. He would climb her trunk and swing from her branches and sleep in her shade, and the boy loved the tree very much, and the tree was happy. But time went by, and the boy grew older, and the tree was often alone. One day the boy came, and the tree said, Come, boy, come and climb my trunk and swing from my branches and eat apples and play in my shade and be happy. I'm too big to climb and play, said the boy. I want money. Can you give me money? I'm sorry, said the tree, I have no money. Take my apples, sell them in the city, then you will have money and you will be happy. And so the boy gathered her apples and carried them away and the tree was happy. But the boy stayed away for a long time and the tree was sad. One day the boy came back and the tree shook with joy and said, come boy, come, climb my trunk and swing from my branches, eat apples and play in my shade and be happy. I'm too busy to climb trees, he said. I want a wife and children. I need a house. Can you give me a house? I have no house, said the tree. But you may cut off my branches and build a house. Then you may be happy. And so the boy cut off her branches and carried them away to build a house, and the tree was happy. But the boy stayed away a long time, and the tree became sad. And when he came back, the tree was happy. She could hardly speak. Come, boy, come play. I'm too old to play, said the boy. I want a boat to take me away from here. Can you give me a boat? Cut down my trunk and make a boat, said the tree. You can sail away and be happy. And so the boy cut her trunk and made a boat and sailed away, and the tree was happy, but not really. And after a long time, the boy returned. I'm sorry, boy, said the tree. I have nothing left to give you. My apples are gone, my branches are gone, my trunk is gone. I'm so sorry, sighed the tree. I'm just an old stump. I don't need much now, said the boy, just a quiet place to sit and rest. Well, said the tree, straightening herself as much as she could, an old stump is a good spot for sitting and resting. Come, boy, sit and rest. And the boy did, and the tree was happy. The great German theologian Martin Luther said, the whole gospel could be summarized in one verse found in John 3.16. He called it the gospel in miniature. God so loved the world, he gave his only son to the end that all that believed should not perish but have everlasting life. Yeah, it's a good one. But with all due respect to the father of the Protestant Reformation, I must say that while the verse is theologically strong, literarily, it's sorely lacking. There's no story. And stories are what bring us back to the Bible over and over to peel back layer upon layer as we search for that beating heartbeat of the Bible. We are a people of the gospel, yes, but we are a people of gospel stories. My husband is a storyteller. As is true of many musicians, he loves books as much as he loves songs. And it certainly doesn't hurt that he comes from Alabama, where a stop for directions or a piece of fried chicken or, an ask, or, or to fill up the tank with gas inevitably turns into some story from a stranger about a chicken who can pump gas and give directions at the same time. It's uncanny. Whenever we move, and we've moved a lot in our married life, he always packs about one box of clothes, 10 guitars, and about 50 boxes of books. Thank God y'all gave us a basement, <laughs> truly. Last night, 
I was mining that basement for a story for our daughter. And I came across this bright green one with a simple drawing of a little boy reaching up for an apple falling from a tree. It is so simple, but it makes me cry every time. There's nothing like a good story. You can tell me that unconditional love is good and I will nod with intellectual assent. Or you can tell me a story about a tree willing to strip leaf and branch and trunk to make a boy happy, and you will pull a tear as well as a conversion from me into the belief in divine love. Yes, we are a people who need stories. Therefore, I would counter Luther by saying this morning's reading from Luke, which we fondly call the prodigal son, is actually the gospel in miniature. It's a colorful one, isn't it? Filled with every family story of generosity and betrayal and shame and anger and love and forgiveness. We are all children, and some of us are parents, and every last one of us has seen ourselves in this story. At times, we have been the wayward son. Who among us hasn't taken more than our fair share? Who among us hasn't made choices that we deeply regretted and known the withering shame of a respected elder's disappointment? Who among us hasn't been the bitter elder brother? So self-righteous, so unappreciated, we would rather be alone than be wrong. And the father, always the symbol of generosity, but the extent to which he takes it. Selling off ancient family lands <clears throat> to, to give to a child to squander and then throwing a party when that ne'er-do-well returns? Ooh, can't you just hear the neighbors talking over the fences? Mm-mm. But never mind. Let them talk. Who among us hasn't loved someone so much that we would take them back no matter how many times they hurt us so, so, so badly? Dear son, you had me at hello. My beloved, my friend. Most of the sermons that I have heard on this morning's gospel end up in the same place, offering us an admonition to be more like the Father. After making the case that all of us are somehow one of the disappointing sons, we have been lovingly and firmly told, be better than you are. Have you heard that sermon before? Be better than you are. And in this Lenten season, a season often dedicated to self-improvement, I have my own confession to make. I am wearied by the American Protestant drumbeat of self-improvement. The ongoing message which somehow tells me to feel bad about who I am and to be better than I am. Be more patient, more generous, more prayerful, more perfect. And if you can't, than appear to be so. You may just succeed in fooling your neighbor, and if you're really good at it, you'll fool God too. <laughs> it's a pervasive message in our tradition, and it's a toxic one to our spirit, and in the end, it's idolatry. Because it's not the gospel story. In the end, I am who I am, says I. And God replies, I am who I am. And thank God for that, because that is the point. Last night, I snuggled with my child and introduced her to this little green gospel that my husband has carried around since childhood. And I let her look at the cover for a while, and I said, do you know that this book is about God? God, she said. Yes, God is a tree in this book. And then we began to read a simple story about the kind of God who loves us. At the end of the book, she said, so the tree is God, and I said, yes. So who's the boy, she asked. You, me, anyone, I said. Is the boy good or is the boy bad, she asked. Yes, I said. We are who we are, dear child. 
and deciding who's good and who's bad isn't worth the trouble anyway. But let's talk and tell more stories about God, sweet child, because God is what it's all about. Amen. <laughs>